Advocate for Simbox. Joined by Joe Gallagher. How are you doing, Joe? Yeah, not too bad. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, Paul. Thanks. Um, so obviously we're down here for the, uh, the presser. Uh, we've got Taylor on the card, Bats on the card, and of course, Anti Crawler. Yeah. Um, one last roll of the dice. Yeah, it's uh, emotional when you start sitting back and reflecting everything that he's done over the um, period of time in his career. So, um, yeah, it will do. I said to him in the gym the other week, I said, do you know when Rocky had that one more last time to Mr T? Should we have a bit of a public workout like that? Have a bit of a fun fair, balloons, models, all that type of stuff. And uh, he wasn't having none of it. So, uh, yeah, like you say, it's, uh, it's, uh, he's done very well in his career. Um, I've known Anthony for 20 years been with me over 10 years and we've had a real roller coaster and everyone keeps saying what was your best highlight there's too many to name one when you look back beating at Michael Brody, Andy Morris, John Watson for the British, Willie Lemons in Scotland and um, Kieran Farrell being British champion and then the incident then coming back and becoming world champion fighting for all the belts against Linares and Lomachenko it's you couldn't have written it and uh, it was hard for him as well. He was following in the footsteps of Ricky Hatton. Um, he used to bang that arena out week in, week out. I'm never not saying he did fill his footsteps, but he brought Manchester some great nights that people have great memories. And looking at the social media feedback over the last weekend, everyone remembers they were there that night when he beat um, Barossa and, um, and Perez. Yeah, as well, yeah. yeah, of Definitely. course it was. So that'll stay with people. And th 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 Anthony's been then now, and there's a, there's a void to fill. It'd be great for Tyson Fury to come back and headline the Manchester Arena to keep the Manchester flag going and it's up to the next generation now to come through and make a mark and um, own the Manchester Arena. Definitely. I think that, uh, that flow on nicely to my next question which is uh, mentioning the, uh, the M22 promotion card um, this Sunday. Um, just a quick word on that one, it's a, it's a stunning lineup for a small hall show. Yeah, it's just a case of um, keeping the fighters relevant. Paul Butler, former world champion, he's ranked number two in the IBF, number one in Europe. So his next fight will most probably be a world title fight once that belt becomes vacant out of the World Boxing Super Series. Um, so it's a case of just keeping him relevant, keeping him active, keeping his ratings active. Um, also then Sam Hyde, we're chasing the React Poor fight. So it's a case of him staying relevant, getting a win. Marcus Morrison coming off a great smash and grab in Italy, doing the Italian job, keeping his profile high. He's involved in a good fight. Right. And then we've got a couple of kids on the undercard, uh, King Wickham or Wickham King or King Wickham the first as he's known as, making his professional debut, an outstanding amateur. Um, Connor Lynch, 4-0, looking to make it 5-0. Nathan Farrell, after having a great professional debut in Liverpool, looking to make it 2-0. And, and George Brennan as well, looking to make a, another win as he closes in on a, a title shot. So yeah, it's a good afternoon's worth of boxing. New kids on the block, the next generation of fighters. I know Paul Butler's a bit old to be that, but it's for the likes of your Mark to Sam Hyde to take the baton to move on and try and desire and have that dream of headliner or chief supporter at the Manchester Arena and uh, yeah and everyone keeps saying M22 why M22 well M22 is Withenshaw, Ben Shill, my postcode where I'm from and this is the second show I've done back in Withenshaw and I want to bring professional boxing back there and for people to come out on a Sunday afternoon and watch world class fighters at uh, the arena um, at the leisure centre there it's a uh, it's great for them and uh, first bell's half two and it'll all be over for five, half five and uh, it's a good chance for the, the dads and lads and the mums and the daughters to come and watch boxing. Definitely, I mean, I was there for the first uh, the first show back in, uh, I think it was June. June, yeah, yeah. Father's Day. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and like you say, it was, it was a really good opportunity for um, the younger generation of fans uh, to come out and, and see, you know, big name boxers. You had the crawler there in attendance, you had the Smith was there watching uh, Stephen. Um, and you, you don't really get that kind of action on your doorstep and obviously to take it back to Lindshaw where you're from it must be a really proud moment for yourself yeah it is even when I was an amateur coach I, I held uh, amateur shows at the Lindshaw Forum but it was always something I wanted to do as a pro and the first show we did well now the second one with this and uh, I just think to myself well it's just something I want to be able to do like everyone's goal and dream your set goals your thing is I'd love to promote a show at the Manchester Arena mm -hmm. that's something that's motivating me will I do will I not I don't know but you can't stand still in life and I want to keep doing things to keep me motivated and go focused and if I can help kids in their careers Wickham is for professional debut and keep Sam Marcus and Paul relevant then I will do and for the Withenshaw which is a huge council estate and uh, there's lots of good people up there they've had great success over the years and uh, it's great for them to come out and be able to, to watch this and it's very accessible just off the M56 as well at the airport so it's good and it's affordable as well. Definitely, now I spoke to Kieran uh, last night funny enough about the card 
Um, and he mentioned himself, oh, you know, you guys are going to dream big, and you know, maybe one day, um, you know, you can move from like the leisure centres to in somewhere like the arena. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, had, I had a chat with Kieran um, earlier on in the year, and um, listen, Kieran's doing fantastically well. He puts so many hours. He lives, breathes it, understands it, and he's adapted well to life outside of the ring. Um, and at the time, Crawler, we didn't say I try. I'm just doing my job for Crawler. But um, he's a young kid, he's ambitious, he's doing the best that he can. Um, he's just usually married and he needs to break a little thing. He's got lots of kids and if we can work together and bring the big shows to Bolton and to Manchester, then that's what I do. I think we work well and um, he's uh, invaluable to me and, uh, and the setup of M22 Promotions as well. Fantastic. Now, um, if we just move away a little bit to a couple of other members of the stable. Uh, obviously, we had Liam Smith out in Mexico recently, uh, picking up a good victory um, out there. Uh, your thoughts on that fight? Yeah, Liam, it was a great fight. I thought it was Liam back to his best, snarling, strong on the front foot. Had an excellent win, good stoppage. Somebody like Charlo and uh, Mattison Vierson couldn't do, uh, and he stopped him, um, which is good. So hopefully now he gets a, another world title shot and a chance to become the first Liverpool fighter to become a, a two-time world champ. Back here again with Joe Gallagher. We're just discussing, uh, you know, future possibilities for Liam Smith um, and where he goes next after his knockout win out in Mexico. Um, what's your thoughts on? on yeah, no, had a good move? win. Hopefully now, if Mungai gives up the vacant belt. Um, Liam gets in a position to fight for the vacant title. I'd like him. I would have liked him to fought Dennis Hogan, who had a yeah. controversial loss. Yeah. That would be a good fight. And then when he's won that, then defend it against your Vargas or your Kel Brooks. Yeah. And the way the stars are aligning, it'd be great for Liam Smith versus Kel Brook, Callum Smith versus who? Paul Butler world title, and you can see sort of like a downfield show coming together a little bit. Definitely not. You say that, but you know, Jaime Munguia uh, possibly vacating. Um, I'm sure that's a fight that you know still has a bit of needle with Liam Smith. You know, yeah, Lee, Liam wants to put that right. He went out there late through passport issues, jet lag. It, Liam doesn't make many excuses, but he knew if he's a bit more regular and active, he would have uh, put a better performance in. Although he did put a good performance, in the scorecards no way reflected uh, mm. the closeness of that fight. Definitely. Um, mentioned another Smith over there, Callum Smith. Um, I'm sure you're tired of hearing about you know what's next for Callum at this point. Um, definitely looking towards you know the Anfield date and the big Liverpool card. Yeah, the Anfield, that's what um, Ed is talking about at the moment and um, also will be out before the end of the year as well so uh, I'm sure there'll be a, a, an announcement soon um, on the, the fight and the date and the, the opponent. Definitely, well, thanks for your time Joe. Cheers, um, no problem mate. We'll see you Sunday. Thank Cheers, you. thank you.